What's up, guys? I'm Mike from Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have an interesting episode for you guys today. Uh, overall, I hope everyone enjoyed their long weekend. The market is not open today. Today is Monday, September 7th of 2020. It is Labor Day, so the markets are closed, except for the futures market. Uh, they were open temporarily, but we have some interesting news in regards to China, Tesla, and some other news with futures that we're going to be going over in this episode. And we also have a $2.8 million uh, option on Apple. Uh, it's a pretty good setup. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see the Apple setup we have for you guys. Uh, if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe to see our daily videos on our YouTube homepage every single day. But let's get right into it. So uh, Tom, what major news happened over the weekend? Yeah, the biggest news was really that China says that August exports beat expectations, jumping 9.5% from a year ago, which is nice to see. I mean, at least it's nice to see because a lot of companies use China, you know, to produce things and then we export them from China to the United States. So it's pretty good to see China beating expectations on this jump. And really, I think the coronavirus and online sales have really fueled, um, you know, this, this jump um, up 9.5% from a year ago. But really, I mean, there, there hasn't been too good of U.S. Uh, U.S. and China relations lately, and adding fuel to the fire, shares of SMIC, which is China's biggest contract chip maker, plunged 23% on Monday after the U.S. government said it was considering putting export restrictions on that company. And once again, we have the U.S. government going after another Chinese tech company, kind of like they went after TikTok, and they went after a couple of other chip makers as well, I believe, and now they're going to go after SMIC. And they ended up falling 23%, which is huge for Chinese biggest chip maker. Like imagine, you know, if China made NVDA fall 25%, you know, everybody would be freaking out. Yeah, true. And to be honest, I'm pretty skeptical with this 9.5% increase from a year ago with China's data. You know, like we both know that China has been known to either fluff the numbers or lie a little bit with their data. And I don't know, to see a 9.5% jump, I don't know. I'm just kind of skeptical about that. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. They're obviously a, a country that, you know, one person pretty much rules. And, I mean, they can pretty much do whatever they want. The head of the government can. And like you said, they can fluff numbers. They, they've done it before. They, they fluff numbers whenever it came to the coronavirus numbers as well. So, I mean, obviously with companies, I could see them fluffing them even more. And, Honestly, I, I, I didn't expect to see a jump of 9.5%. I mean, there's been a lot of U.S. companies doing good and a lot of tech companies doing good. So maybe like companies like Amazon and stuff like that are really what's fueling this little jump. But I mean, other than that, I mean, I, it could be them just fluffing the numbers as well. But um, really, I mean, I think Amazon could have, you know, definitely played a factor into this considering a lot of stuff, you know, from them comes from China. True. So yeah, we'll see. But uh, I'm just a little skeptical on it, but either way, if they actually are up 9.5%, uh, that is good for the global economy. And then how are futures doing today, even though the market's closed? Yeah, even though the market's closed, the Dow was up 200 points, which is nice to see from a day, um, from the past two days. I mean, on Thursday and Friday, we fell over 1,000 points, and you can just see this very big step to the downside on the Dow, like we hit 29,180, almost triple top at that number, and then just tanked all the way down to 27,643. And, you know, we've really had a nice recovery back to the upside here. I'm really glad to see that um, whenever futures were open today, and they ended up closing at noon today for everybody that didn't know they had an early close because of Labor Day. But um, really, it was nice to see that they ran up, you know, Sunday night and early this morning. Um, I really like to see that, especially going into Monday, you know, hopefully the markets can kind of recover and maybe come back up to highs. But I know a lot of people were, uh, were banking on puts and getting a lot of puts, you know, at the end of the week last week as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the market had a pretty big fall for the past two days. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we do have a little bit of a bounce back up, but we'll talk more about that later in the episode. What other major news happened over the weekend? Yeah, I mean, Market Watch really announced that it was a bit of a shocker that um, Tesla was not added to the S and P 500 actually, and this was a pretty crazy article to go ahead and read. I mean, we've been looking at Tesla getting added to the S and P 500 for about a month or more now, and you know they finally hit the numbers to be able to be added in, but the S and P 500 actually added three 
different companies in. So they went ahead and added in Catalan Incorporated, which is CTLT. They added in Etsy and then Teradyne Incorporated, which is ticker T-E-R. And those three companies are doing very well, um, you know, also especially Etsy. But really, I mean, I cannot believe that Tesla was not added to the S&P 500. And um, some analysts from MarketWatch actually said that it's a bit of a head scratcher. And, you know, it's just one of those things that really is a head scratcher. I could not believe that Tesla was not added to the S&P 500 considering how well they've been doing and considering what type of companies really are in the S&P 500. Out of those 500 companies, I could find, you know, about 400, at least 400 other ones that I'd rather take out, you know, and then put Tesla in over. All right. I mean... Yeah, I mean Tesla has has uh, has uh, meet the expectations and the requirements to become a member of the S and P five hundred, but for some reason they just weren't added. Like like you said, there was no major reason. It was really a head scratcher for a lot of people, and that's why we saw Tesla fall uh, in after hours. Like I don't think this is going to be like a make it or break it for Tesla. Like you know, it's going to be like a little short fall, like we saw in after hours, but. I don't think it's going to affect Tesla too much in a negative way because, you know, they're, like we said, their numbers are solid. You know, they're profitable now. Uh, overall, they're doing great as a company. So I don't really think this is going to affect Tesla too much to the downside. You know, we might get something in the short term, but I don't see this like, you know, making Tesla like fall uh, anything huge. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and on September 22nd, we actually have Tesla having an event coming up with that battery day where they're going to be announcing, uh, you know, research and development on their million do a million mile battery where they're hoping to produce a battery to last a million miles. And just keep in mind that that's probably not going to happen right away. They might <laughs> come up with a battery, you know, maybe start out at a hundred thousand miles. I, 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 it would be amazing to see a million mile battery and that would definitely put them at the high end of the spectrum, well over $500 a share after the split, because you have to keep in mind that every semi truck company, everybody doing any type of shipping in the world will just automatically switch to those million mile batteries because that would honestly be insane. And plus, the upkeep on Tesla vehicles is very low since it's pretty much just tires and then the electric motor. That's pretty much all you have. You don't have to worry about you know, a seven speed transmission or, or, um, how properly lub lubricated the, the engine is, or, you know, or, or your alternator, you don't have anything like that in these electric vehicles. And, um, really that would definitely catapult them if they did come out with this million uh, mile battery, but this is going to be a huge event for Tesla coming up. So maybe this pullback is just one of those pullbacks that happens. And then, you know, they're going to have that nice event that, that will skyrocket them up another 20 to 25%. Yeah, I mean, we could just look at their chart and we could tell Tesla is definitely doing great things and they have a lot of advancements. So overall, uh, they're doing great as a company. But now it's time for our Discord member of the day. And today's member of the day is Daffy. So Daffy has been nominated for the member of the day uh, because he's been sharing a lot of great information and helping a lot of new traders in the Discord. So we wanted to give a shout out to Daffy. Thank you so much uh, for helping everyone and for having positive, uh, positive vibes. So thank you for that. And now for the momentum trades for tomorrow. And the, and the first one is Workhorse. So another electric vehicle company, uh, Workhorse, we are looking at them potentially to the upside. So uh, Tom, what levels should we be watching? Yeah, watch for them to go ahead and break above. I would make them break 1990 to the upside or even I would even raise it up to $20 because if this really breaks 20, you could expect it to rise to 21, but this is a great setup and if it breaks this high of around let's just say 1985 to $20, this would be a great uh great stock for calls. Yep, exactly. And then with the next play we have KSS. Holes, watch for them to pop above $22.35, which was their high in after hours um, on Friday. Yep, and that one is also to the upside. And then we have Lowe's, L-O-W, but this one is to the downside. Yeah, this one, watch for them to fall below 153.44. And really, I mean, Lowe's has been one of those stocks that's been going up lately as well. And this one really looks like it could fall off the table based on how high they are above their highs and, can, and also considering that they're not one of those tech stocks. Right. And guys, in order to play those plays, uh, for example, with uh, Workhorse and Kohl's, 
You want to see it break above the level Tom listed before getting in. And with lows, you want to see the, the stock break below the level Tom was, uh, listed uh, before getting in uh, for the downside. So uh, now for our $2.8 million options trade uh, for tomorrow, and we are looking at the Apple 120 strike call options. They expire on October 16th. So uh, overall, Apple had a pretty big fall the past three days. We saw it go from highs of about 138 all the way down to lows of about $111, right? It's a pretty big spread right there. But Apple is one of those stocks that whenever it has a big fall, it almost always comes right back up and breaks all-time highs. I mean, just look at their chart. Every time they have a major fall, they almost always come right back up and break all-time highs. So uh, overall, Apple, you know, it really looks like they are longing these options. You know what I mean? I mean, why would you short these options is, is the question. I mean, look, it's at the 120 strike, so it's right at the money, and it expires on October 16th. So to me, this is almost a given that they are buying these call options. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, and Apple is also coming out with the uh, the iPhone 12, which is going to be, you know, their new flagship phone, and I believe that phone's going to be really expensive. And it's, you know, it, they have a ton of technology going into it. I believe there's going to be like four different cameras on the back. And wow. obviously it's going to have a better processor. And there's going to be a ton of new stuff coming out with it. But um, Apple really loves to run on those new phone releases as well. So, yeah, I mean, I would definitely think they're, they're longing this, especially since, like you said, it was, it was in the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty much at the money right now. Um, so, yeah, overall, I mean, it looks like they're definitely longing it. You know, nothing's guaranteed, but... It, as of right now, it really looks like they're longing it. So uh, now for our comments from the previous episode. And with the first comment, we have uh, T saying, uh, Mike and Tom, what makes Tesla went straight down on Friday in the after hours? Is it because of the $50 million options trade that you mentioned on Thursday? So uh, that is not the case. So Tesla went down because of their news with the S&P 500. So I'll let Tom explain a little more. Yeah, really. I mean, Tesla ended up falling because the S&P 500, they, you know, they, they go ahead and have a big checklist and they obviously investigate these companies before they, you know, add them into the S&P 500. And Tesla's been one of those companies that they've been talking about adding for about a month now. And they obviously beat expectations and their stock price obviously has beat almost every other stock's expectations over the past 10 years. It's just been one of those crazy stocks. And really, I mean, I cannot believe that they weren't added. And that's really what a lot of other investors, I think, you know, thought as well is, hey, look, the S&P 500 is not going to add Tesla into this. I wonder if there's some underlying reason why they're not adding Tesla in. So really, I think that's why the shares ended up falling in after hours. But also keep in mind that there's low volume in after hours so that if there is some, some, uh, some big market makers or institutions selling in after hours, it can also dramatically affect the price more than, you know, normal market hours. And, and the thing is, like, they didn't fall too much. Like, yes, they fell, but it, it wasn't, like, a crazy fall. But they fell because of the S&P 500 news. There's really no main reason uh, as to why they were not added. It was just kind of like a head-scratcher event. Uh, with the next comment, we have Benawal saying, uh, hey, guys, can you please talk about Shopify? Any put ideas? So uh, what do you think about Shopify? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of room on this for puts to the downside, at least. Um, my only concern is that how um, they've been trading sideways over the past few months, you know, that could maybe lead to a, you know, maybe some more upward momentum coming in the future. And especially considering how well they've been doing lately, you can see their earnings for share down here really going up with the coronavirus. So that that's great to see for them as a company overall, especially this last earnings call. That was really a good one for them. Um, but I mean, overall, I would expect them to continue going up in the long term. But in the short term, I mean, I think that they're just going to move how the market moves. If you look at Tesla and Apple and a lot of um, a lot of these other tech stocks that have really ran up with the coronavirus, you can see that um, you know Shopify here has fallen down the past couple of days with them, and they almost have the same chart set up as Tesla. So I could see a lot of these stocks really moving in the same way um, or moving in equilibrium, as a lot of people like to say. So I really think that they'll move um, really with how the Nasdaq and the overall market moves. So. Um, really, I think if the market ends up popping back up Monday, I don't see this as being a good put opportunity. But um, if I do see good momentum to the downside, you know, on um, on Tuesday morning, I mean, 
I will, I will definitely consider puts on this, but really I think it's going to do whatever the overall market does. Yeah. So I don't see too much downside potential with Shopify unless the NASDAQ like takes a, like a really big beating. So uh, I see Shopify kind of bouncing back up. We could see that they went from about 1,150 all the way down to lows of about 900 on Friday, right? So that's a pretty big pull. And look at, we are talking about a tech stock right now. And out of all tech stocks, we're talking about an e-commerce tech stock, which that industry has been exploding. So I really do not see Shopify falling too much more unless the overall market really falls. Um, yeah, and, I, and that doesn't mean that, you know, puts aren't going to be a, a good play or a bad play because there could always be some intraday movement that, you know, you could play puts off of if you wanted to do it that way. But I mean, but really, I mean, the way Shopify has been going, I don't see it really falling down too much either. It's been such a killer lately, especially with the e-commerce, just like Amazon. They're almost like an Amazon competitor, really, on, on the online marketplace. Yep, kind of. Um, with the next comment, we have Hunter saying, uh, should I sell my Bank of America stock or keep it? So Bank of America, um, well, if you're in it for the long term, I would definitely hold it. Um, if you're in it for the short term, um, I don't know what where you got in at, but uh, overall it's been uptrending pretty, pretty solid uh, recently. What do you think about this? Yeah, I know Hunter's actually in for the long term. He's talked to me about it. Oh, no, it no, uh, Tom, this is a different Hunter. Oh, it's a different Hunter. It's not Hunter Duger. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. But yeah, but yeah, I would definitely, I think, hold these if you're definitely going for the long term, like Mike said. Um, Bank of America is just one of those stocks that, you know, they're, they could definitely go up a lot more. But um, obviously, in 2008, they had some problems and fell down to $2 a share. And I mean, that's a little scary to see. But keep in mind, a lot of bank stocks got killed in 2008. So obviously, you know, don't, don't take that to heart with Bank of America. Even if they do fall down to $2 a share, you know, over the next five to 10 years, they will be back up, you know, at least historically speaking. But um, it's one of those stocks I would hold. And in the short term, it, it kind of looks like bank stocks have been doing kind of good lately. I know the market hasn't been doing too well, but um, bank stocks, I know me and you've been playing them to the upside. And there's been a couple of plays with statistical modeling, like where we, where we sniped this Bank of America play right here, um, right before the market ended up crashing on Thursday. Yeah, that was a good play. So uh, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market for this week? Yeah, I mean, my biggest thing I'm going to be watching this week is actually going to be GLD. Um, they're sitting right on my support here at around $188.75. And I really like that support. And they've been playing well off of it lately as well. And it seems like gold is kind of consolidating in a little little bit of a wedge formation here. And But really, the biggest thing is that with all the big movement with the market lately, um, either to the upside or the downside, gold has been moving almost with the market. So whenever the market goes down, gold goes down. Whenever the market goes up, gold goes up. And that's really been good opportunities for GLD, you know, calls and puts. And obviously, I think that GLD, if the market ends up going up, I think the GLD will follow the market back up here um, over the next couple of days if we do see those tech stocks and stuff like that start rising. Yeah, normally what happens is, you know, when there's fear in the markets, normally gold rises. And then when there isn't too much fear in the markets, uh, gold falls. But uh, recently, we've been kind of seeing gold and the market overall kind of run up together. Uh, part of this is because of the increased inflation. Um, but yeah, that's generally how it works. So thank you so much for sharing that play. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Tom and I really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much for the comments, the likes, and the new subscribers. Uh, any little comment down below really helps grow the channel. So Tom and I are so grateful for all the comments, likes, and new subscribers. So thank you guys so much. Um, if you guys want to try out the new uh, options day trading robot that has been doing very well, uh, you can click the stocked up options alerts link in the description down below and try it out for a month. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. Other than that, thanks for watching.